Greetings, good bastards. I'm about to open this. It came from Greg Wells and Ozzy. And Greg, before I open this, I just want to say, mate, I don't know what's in there, but thank you very, very much for uh, sending me this. And on that note, guys, don't send me anything if you uh, can't afford to. Only if you can, because my needs are met here at the old farmhouse. What have we got in here? These are packets of things. Oh, awesome. A lot of hooks. Oh, cool. I'm actually going fishing tomorrow, so that's good. And more hooks. Oh, Greg, you good bastard. Check that out. Jeez, mate. Oh, there's a letter here. Oh, I'm going to struggle to read that. That's a big letter. I'm going to struggle to read that. I'll read a little bit and I'll share what's more in here. Because um, I'm used to reading. Hi, Clay. Oh, I'm a keen watcher of the Brocheck Club. Oh, mate. Now, I've got to just say about the Brocheck Club, well, I've had two strikes against it uh, because I mentioned... Uh, one of Damo's friends that got killed by having a certain pharmaceutical procedure that most of us had to have. And uh, because I mentioned that, I got a strike. Stupid, eh? And then I also talked about some adverse effects one of my mates had, and I got another strike. And if I get a third strike, the channel's gone, and I'm not allowed to post for a while. So we'll uh, get that channel back up and running once uh, those strikes have disappeared. There's a certain time you're put in jail for. Uh, it's just ridiculous. Anyway, I won't talk about it too much. Um... Oh, look, I'm not going to be able to read all this, buddy. I'll have to read it my own time because I'm pretty um, illiterate. Uh, then it says, keep on track and on of everything you do, legend. Greg Wells, you're the bloody legend. He goes, vintage 1962. Uh, good on you, Greg. Uh, mate, this is a whole lot of fishing stuff here. Whoa, we can always use that. Happy days. And, oh, this, this says vitamin... B and C, but I don't think it is. It feels like it's got sinkers in it. What's this? It's a cork. Yeah, he sent me some sinkers. Oh, you crack it, mate. You sent sinkers from overseas. <laughs> That's a weight factor, bro. There's a whole lot of sinkers in there. All different sizes. Little ones, like that size there, all tiny. And big ones. Can always use those. Oh, top like top like And, oh, tiny little hooks. The small ones here, they'll be good for catching, like, mullet and herring. Oh, these are really good. Look at the tiny little sabiki rig. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. And also some more cat gut. Hey, total good bastard. Thank you very much. Going to use that tomorrow. Right, I'm doing a snap vlog. What's a snap vlog? A snap vlog is when I just don't uh, edit the video. All I do is I hit the pause button like this here. And then before you know it, we're out here in the garden. Look at the swan plant. Look at the size of those big seed pods. Aren't they wicked? And when they burst, this is what comes out of them. All of these seeds. And then they just like sell seed around the place. And hey, you can never have too many swamp plants because they bring the monarch butterflies in. And they, they rock. Check out, check out all the new growth on the kefir plants. This is kefir lime and it's really nice in a beef salad. Oh, I should have used the other phone. I'm on the SX22. Sorry, not the SX, the uh, S22. That's my phone, Galaxy. But it's got a problem. It's got a glitch. It sort of clicks around the place. This is Super Duck, everybody. Hey Super Duck, hey mate, that's her boyfriend over there, old Lumpy, look at her doing the old head thing, head down the puddle thing, yeah it's kind of like a bit of a mating dance thing she does. So I raised Super Duck in my bedroom, well actually I raised her first one in an incubator, and then in my bedroom in a box. She's doing the old head thing down, I'm sure she's keen on old uh, Lumpy there, well he won't be uh, making any babies of his lump, will he? But I'm actually uh, referring to his bumblefoot. He's got bumblefoot. It's kind of like a disease that uh, they get sometimes. Not really a disease, it's just like an inflammation. Although it's got better. Hey, bumblefoot, you all right, mate? See that foot on the uh, side towards us, a little bit fat? He's your boyfriend, isn't he? Yeah. And that's Ducky. And Ducky's 21 years old. That's very old for Muscovy. Real old. They don't normally get that old. I bred Muscovy ducks, and the reason I bred this white one is when you pluck the white ones, you don't see all the like black feathers if you don't get them all. But generally, Muscovies are black and white, but this is actually a white one, and I kept her out of all the ones, and she's just a mate now. Hey, ducky, we're not killing you, are we, mate? Nah, you're hanging around the farm. This garden here's got like spinach, good old soil beet. Every kiwi garden's got one, and these different colour ones, which are really like awesome, mate. Eh? Good chewing. Those of you that understand the importance of getting your greens each day makes you feel bloody good. Uh, here's a wee thing though with your silver beet, if you don't know it already, always eat the entire stalk because the actual goodness is as much in the stalk, if not more, than it is in the green part. I've seen sometimes people throw the stalk away. There's where all your like vitamin C, uh, nutrients, 
the real the real good stuff that's going to help you uh, nitrogen lots of nitrogen you need that to get the old basal dilation going get the heart going and everything making you feel a lot better so eat your stalks if you saw a beet this patch we grew garlic in uh, last winter I'm not sure whether I put garlic in again or I put something else that's ready for growing what would you guys suggest this time of year I know that if we plant beans it will add nitrogen to the soil so I like the idea of putting beans in for winter but can you grow beans in winter I know the dwarf beans grow right now but what would you guys plant in New Zealand at this time of year if you're at the top of South Island in a patch of good fertile soil at? I've put in manure, I've put in some seaweed, I've put in some coffee grounds, I've put in chicken poo, duck poo, sheep poo. Now, there's no human poo in there because that would, that would suck. But I have got it ready for growing. So what do you guys reckon? Because I'm still experimenting with stuff. Don't waste your urine gardeners. It's got urea in it and it feeds everything, but also dilute it. So this is my worm farm. And she's hanging around for the coffee and the worms. There's worms in here and there's coffee in here. The reason there's coffee in here is we use old coffee grounds to feed our worms. And then sometimes they come out the plug. Oh, this is where we get our worm juice to go in the garden. Hey, mate. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah you know the story, don't you? Yeah. Uh, right, let's see how we're going. Right, yeah, let's see what's going on with the worm farm. Oh, that's all coffee. Lots of creepy crawlies in there. Super duck would love it. What the hell is that? Is that a homemade plane? Not a Cessna, is it? What's that, guys? Anybody know? I haven't seen that one before. I've got that little tracker on my phone, that little uh, app that tells you what's flying overhead. But I'll have to go out of my camera to do that, and we don't want to do that because we're filming non-stop today. Yeah, I'm not giving any worms, mate. Nah, nah, not getting any. Nah, looking up at me. Look at her looking up. Hey, you want some worms, don't you? Yeah, I know. Not going to happen. Sorry, righto. I want to see how this coffee's breaking down and if there's worms underneath it or not. Put in a... Oh, yes, look at that. Oh, beautiful. Oh. So what we've got there is we've got a mixture of brown and green. And that's what you want for a compost. You can see the brown, it's the actual... Not the coffee... Although it is brown, although it's actually considered green, if that makes sense. The brown is actually the sawdust, which came uh, with the, the chicken house. It had chicken poo in it. And as you can see, we're getting these nice worms all through that. And they are breaking it down right now. That's what I want to see. And a few bugs and crawlies. That's good. That gives you an idea. You can under here, how's this looking? I think it's going to be looking pretty good too. Got some straw in there and some nice big worms. Yeah, and all the chicken shit. So, just letting that getting broken down. it do its magic for a bit longer. Yeah, no, she's good. Coffee grounds are great. Put this back over and stop it drying out. We don't want to dry our worms out too much. Yeah, sorry, mate, you didn't get any of that. I'm not giving you my worm stuff at the garden. I'm just going to put a bit more water on it. I get my coffee at a local cafe where they just throw the grains out, and it's really good to add to stuff like this, but if you put it in the soil... Excuse, I'm spitting there. If you put it in the soil, then um, it can be quite acidic. So you don't plant your seedlings in it. You you want something a little bit more alkaline. And it's really good if you're growing stuff like leeks. Your leeks love coffee grounds. And this year I put a lot of coffee grounds in my leeks and got beautiful fat leeks. That's the Prowler 13. Going to take that beast out tomorrow. Going to get my sorry bum out of bed in the morning and try and uh, see if we can catch fish while there's still fish out there. Now this is a bit sad looking. This is where I have my leeks. We've eaten all of them, and these are all lying in the ground left over. Now there's one here which um, that doesn't look like uh, too good. It's got that stiff bit. But uh, here's a young one here, and you'll see at the bottom of it, this is one of the late season ones I grew. It's got the wee tube around it. So I we'll take the tube off, like that, and uh, see what old mate looks like in the ground. See what the state of them is. Yeah, he's, he's a small one, but he'll be fine to eat because he's soft. That's a real small leek. End of season, really. Although it's a very small leek, it's actually a nice, soft, tender one. So it'll be really nice. This one's a bit bigger, but it's getting stalky. Right through the summer, we had real fat leeks, like big fat ones, like twice as or three times as fat as that. And what the plastic did was it stopped them being predated on by other animals and things, but also kept the sun off them as well and protected them and kept them nice and white and you get these nice long white stalks that are soft 
So this is my massive raised bed that we've been working on and it's now starting to produce food already. Some plants need protection against birds like the kale but also against the white butterfly which uh, destroys them and decimates them. There's our two types of kale, three types of kale. We've got the Russian kale, the curly kale and the Tuscan kale. It's also got another name, something like Carvalora or something. Can't say it properly, don't know. And we've got some more, oh, I don't know, that looks like a bit of broccoli in there. And we've got all these growing down the side. These don't need much protection. These are just different types of lettuce. Having said that, something's had a chomp on that. And they all grow down the side, silver beet and some other type of silver beet plants. So I think there's actually a spinach, more kale in there. Got our red beet in there. Bok choy, I love bok choy. And you can see that these from the nursery have actually been caned there by the uh, cabbage butterfly although I have killed the caterpillars on them now manually and we've all weeded in there too but these plants they'll, they'll get away because nothing's going to get in them now bok choy grows so fast really delicious there's our Chinese cabbage really really high all rack value uh, really really delicious too and you can have it in anything you put it in a stew you can have it salad you steam it you can have it fried you can do whatever you want with that stuff it's bloody good chomping rocket or some people call it a uh, what's the other name for rocket? There is another name. Is it oregonal? No, I don't know. What's the other name for rocket? I know that it's a very, very high uh, nitrogen level. It's probably almost at the top as far as that goes. So, but there is another name for rocket. If you know what it is, comment below because I don't know. I thought with the price of cauliflower in the supermarket, I'd put some of those in there. Now oh, these aren't doing very well. I transplanted these. Uh, does anybody know what they are? Hard to see the net, but they're actually kurabi, which is a uh, tastes a bit like Brussels sprout. No, that's not right. Not Brussels sprout. I don't like Brussels sprout. I reckon it tastes like ass. No, they taste like um, I don't know what. If you get a broccoli and you just get the stalk and you just eat that there, it's got that sort of sweet, nice taste in the stalk. Not the real tough bit, but the bit before it gets tough. That's what kurabi tastes like. Anyway, next to that there we've got beetroot. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll come back to those. I do like those, but I can't remember. And just your normal old standard lettuce, which is a good chomping for your salad. And these are my little dwarf beans. And these will produce uh, about three more weeks. We'll start getting some little beans on them already. So there's a winter bean you can grow. Got more bok choy along here just because I can and because it's easy to grow. And I've got some more like, room to plant more stuff. And this soil all comes from that pile here, which comes down where the ducks are down the bottom of the farm. Then we've got the real lazy part of the garden. It gets no work at all, no weeding, nothing, and it produces an absolute fuck ton of vegetables. Look at this. Look at the size of these big kales. And they're so tall now, the rabbits can't even reach them. There's your curly kale. Uh, some people hate this stuff, and I can understand why. It can be boring. It can taste like you're eating gorse if you don't cook it properly. You've got to steam it the right way. You've got to know how to prepare it. Vegetables, they want to live, so they, they spew out all these anti-nutrients and horrible taste that, that, that to protect themselves but if we cook them right we can smash or get rid of that there and get all the goodness they're doing it to protect themselves so like when we're little babies uh, we like sweet things like our mother's milk and all the sweet things that we get given as children and it's how we've kind of evolved to avoid the bitter taste because bitter is often stuff that's actually poison to us so we tend to go more towards sweet but actually a lot of the things that we go away from, because, oh, like Brussels sprouts, oh, I actually hate Brussels sprouts, but a lot of the stuff that's really good for us, that's a bit bitter, actually, we never get to eat because we never get to like it because it's taught us not to eat it, and that's how it protects itself. But if you think about it, one of my most favourite beers used to be bitter beer, and uh, coffee's bitter, and uh, coffee's good for you if you don't have too much. So I reckon getting your head around bitter tastes and exploring ways to make them so they don't uh, make you sick is the way to get it and that's why it's important to process vegetables all in their own way some vegetables are really good for you just raw and other ones need to have some attention and a tomato is a classic example of that chock a, chock a block full of lycopene but the lectins in a raw tomato can upset some people's stomach everybody's different and everybody has different tolerances so you've got to find out what's the same for you if you've got say rheumatoid arthritis for instance or even osteoarthritis you're probably best to make sure you cook your tomatoes in any of your nightshades or must maybe even talk to your doctor about that because he might say avoid all your nightshades uh, if you've got that sort of inflammatory disorder having said that if you're eating a whole balance of of really really healthy vegetables like a real mix you will find that your inflammatory markers go down because that's what vegetables do they actually lower inflammation but it's about not just the vegetable, it's the package it comes in. It's like anything, you've got to mix it with the right thing. And it's the same also with your fruits. 
and we get a bit hooked up on and as someone myself who's been on a ketogenic diet for four years not anymore but I was or three years at least always like being worried about having too much sugar there they go my shitty little organic apples and organic food always looks shitty not to mention the bird shit all over it and the holes in it no it's not pretty at all look at this poor bastard it's got a big hole right on the side of it there and then occasionally we find one that survived everything and look at this it's a nice apple it's just going to fall off the branch it's ripe it's ready for eating if I left this to stay on the tree for another six weeks, even three months, it would just get sweeter and sweeter. The bricks test, it would go up, the sugar content would go up, and it would become a tree ripened apple. And eventually it would almost like crystallise in the inside. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Oh. That is just beautiful. Mate. Oh. Fuck, mate, that's just delicious. Mm. You don't want to get hung up on the, the sugar or the fructose in fruit. Because it's all about the package it comes in. Like this here, this apple, that's a perfect package. And this is why whole food is so much better for you than processed food. Now, when I eat this here, the whole apple, I'm getting fibre. I'm getting the skin with all the nutrients in it. There's all sorts of nutrients in that apple. Apple a day keeps a doctor away, as they used to say when we were kids. But there's so much goodness in this apple, including the fructose. But hey, here's the thing. There's the fibre in it, and what the fibre does is, when you crunch that bastard up, it goes into your stomach, and that fibre becomes like a prebiotic. So you need your probiotic and your prebiotic to have a good microbiome in your gut. And that sucrose, it gets released slowly. So it doesn't spike your insulin, doesn't make you become insulin resistant, it just feeds the sugar slowly into your system and you get that and that's a good thing because you need a little bit for your old brain to think and some people like me need a lot to get the brain to think having said that if we take this apple and we squeeze all the juice out and we make an apple juice and just drink that so you're not getting the fiber then um, you're gonna it's gonna fuck you up because you're gonna end up like raising your insulin levels and and it's, it's sucrose straight sucrose which is actually worse than just eating sugar it will spike your insulin level so so fast and the job of insulin is to shuttle the glucose into your muscles to make you, you know, do stuff in that but if you keep on drinking things like apple juice and that eventually, eventually you become like insulin resistant where your insulin just doesn't do its job anymore and it can't and that's when you're under trouble mmm look mmm it is starting to crystallise in the inside can you see that a little bit that colour mmm really good it's also the same with blending stuff. Now, blenders are all a craze, and people think, oh, I'm blending up all these veggies or these fruit, and it's healthy, but you put that in the blender, and you're also going to stuff up all the all the natural fibre in that too. You're better to chew it in your mouth. Same goes with putting a banana in your, in your smoothie. Don't stick a banana in your smoothie, because you're turning your banana straight into sucrose. You're better just to eat your banana whole and get all the fibre naturally rather than to break the fibre down. A lot of you be going, oh, no, I like having something sweet in there, but you're actually better to just eat the banana separate. So we learned a valuable lesson as you can see and I've talked about this before, uh, the bloody green caterpillars have destroyed these plants and now they're just starting to come away again. The leaves on the inside are okay but the outside ones are munted to hell. Bloody cabbage butterflies. But these beauties, they aren't bothered by them at all. That lettuce grows nicely. As do these ones too. I think that's called cost I think. I'm not sure. I'm not really sure but I think it's called cost. They're not easy to grow avocados i've only got two and they're not very big first year of growing them and my other avocado tree died i'm really pissed off there he goes see that dead as a doorknob there's the there's the graft a bit on the top and uh, it cost like about 60 bucks planted it did a big circle around the outside put lots of stuff on there but it just died i don't know why it died i don't know if it's because it was too much water or not enough water I put heaps of potting mix around. I don't know why it died. It just bloody died. And we lost it. Which is a bugger because it was expensive. And a lot of work went into planting it and getting it and all that. And now it's just fucking dead. So this is the thing about growing shit. You just, sometimes you get this idea. Oh, we're going to grow lots of food and it's going to be awesome. But no, it's just hard work and you lose a lot of stuff. That, that's a bastard, you know. Because you, you put a work and time and effort and you lose it. And it will be cheaper just gone down the shop and bought a box of avocados. We've got two beehives on the property. These are Joe's. Redneck Joe, 
and I'm getting bloody bees all over me while I'm filming this, so if they're starting to sting me, I'm in trouble. That's the other one. He's been over here today to do some stuff, and he's pissed them off a little bit, but hey, they'll be all right. Now, honey is also a bit like sugar. Well, it is sugar. It's got sugar in it. But also, honey has got a whole lot of other good stuff in it too. It's got some inflammatory properties. It's got some natural antiseptic and also natural antibiotic, depending on what sort of honey it is and how active it is. So I used to avoid honey, but now I've started to have a little bit each day. And uh, I haven't noticed anything go weird. I used to be a little bit anal about having too much honey. I thought, oh, if I could have too much honey because it's too much sugar. But actually, I'll have about probably, I'd say, if I'm having something like a, um, a piece of homemade sourdough that we've made ourselves with our own grain ground up on the day, I might have a little bit on that. And here's the thing about bread. I mean, bread's got bugger all nutritional value. But if you take the grains and you, you grind it yourself, and Hillary and Margaret, they've got a grinder. When you grind it, that's, that's, that's good because you can break it down. The trouble is if you grind it, stick it in a bag and leave it in a factory or warehouse for a period of time, it gets oxidation. And then they, we don't want oxidation because that'll stuff us up. So, But if you grind it on the day and you make your sourdough out of the day, well, you've got to f ferment that, um, you end up getting really, really good quality bread that actually is of nutritional value. But again, you don't want too much. A couple of slices of toast and a bit of that honey. Excuse me, I'm, I'm eating this too fast. That's better, have wind. Then uh, it's good and it tastes good. So a little bit of honey is actually good for you. It's like everything. Uh, you don't want to just want to have too much of it, but uh, I actually like honey. And uh, I've got a, a sort of a real thing about eating honey from your land. And there's a really good science paper on that that I think it's the Sydney University did it. No, don't, don't quote me. I'm, I'm probably wrong. Talk, probably talking tall stories. There is a really good paper on that. And they say that the best honey that you can eat is the honey that comes off the land where you live. So if you're eating stuff that's all on your land, like close by, it's something to do with... Oh, it's really, really difficult to explain, actually, because I have to go into the science of it, but just, it's just natural. So it's, it's the least amount of... It's the most efficient way you can get the food, the least amount of output, and it also has uh, to do with the microbes in the ground that you're eating the sheep's following me while I'm walking along here, look. Yep. Do you want a bit of me apple? Huh? Hmm? Yeah. Want a bit of apple? You're going to bugger off now. Well, the one time I offer you something, here you go, blackface. Here you go. Try that on the ground. Yeah, I'm not going to bite you. Oh, you fussy sheep. The gold mate's going to be into it. No. How about that, eh? You fussy bastards. No. Yeah? You thought you were getting a sheep nut. Okay. I don't know how it happened, but the bloody slugs somehow got in here. We're going to better get you with that gloves. Oh, they're sharp. Yeah, a few prickles there. This guy's trying to protect himself. We don't want you in there, mate. Sorry. You can go out of there. Stay down there. I guess they crawled up the outside and went in here because this is a big, great big bed that I made. See, there's a bottom underneath it. They might have gone through some of the holes where the water comes out. There's a few holes underneath, I don't know, don't know how they got through there, but um, yeah, not sure where they got in, where are all the bloody holes, oh there they are in the middle there, okay, right over there, yeah, anyway, they got in there, and I've smashed my wasabi, I've smashed the leaves, look at this, because I can't find any caterpillars on the outside, so I can only assume it's the slugs coming out at night, so tonight I'm going to come down with a torch and have a look at this, now the value of the plant actually isn't in the leaf, although I eat the leaves. The value is in this here, this rising. If you can see that below this bit here. See that there, that big piece? It's expensive if you want to buy it. It's like uh, 250 American a kilo. I think is what the price is right now. There's a real nice big rising over there. And that's, that's what we want to grind up and eat. So these here are like established wasabi. Look at the size of that rising there. That's a big one. Hmm. And these are healthy plants except for their leaves. There's no disease on them. They're healthy, healthy wasabi. Oh no, I found the culprit. There's those bloody caterpillars. Those bloody cabbage butterflies have got into it. There he goes. Oh, I thought it was slugs. I haven't seen many on them. I reckon the wasps have been smashing them. That's the first one I've found in a while. Bastards. So the thing that's on my mind now is what does that taste like? Because uh, it's been eating wasabi. And... Uh, I didn't even know that these guys ate wasabi. It's the first time. I'm quite keen to know whether he tastes like wasabi. There's really only one way to find out, isn't there? And that's to chew him up.
He didn't taste flash. I actually prefer apple myself. It tasted bitter. It didn't really have the heat of the wasabi there. Well, a bit of protein anyway. Hmm. Oh, now that I know what I've got to look for, I'm starting to see them everywhere. I need to put Super Ducky up in here and let her just go around the plants. I reckon she'd clean them up pretty quick. There's an old saying that goes that assumption is the mother of all fuck ups, and I made the assumption that those cabbage butterflies don't touch my wasabi because I've never seen it before, and so I didn't put this net down which would keep the butterflies out. I just left it up for weeding and stuff and kept that up. And the cabbage butterflies have gone in there and laid their eggs and done that. Well, that's a hard lesson. The plants, they should be okay. Winter's coming on now. It would be good to get the rest of the remaining caterpillars out of there before they do. That's a manual job now, go and squash the bastards. But that's something that I've learned. And uh, gaining wisdom all the time as a gardener. You learn as you go along. How you going, Pace? One of my subscribers reckons you don't have an Irish voice. Can you believe that? Fuck what she's talking about, man. I got a fucking lovely Irish voice. Yeah, well, that's what I said to him. But uh, he said no. Fucking voice do I have, man? Who are you, an Irish doggy? My name's Pace McBride, and will you take me for a walk, man? Yeah, okay. What's the story, man? Am I going for a walk or not? Well, mate, you are. The door's already open. I'm just waiting for you to use your patience. We're doing a bit of training here. Pace, stay. Stay. Da, uh, uh, uh. Didn't say go. Stay. Stay. Where you go? Bigsy! How you boy, eh? Bigsy! Stay. Stay there. Stay. Stay. Stay there. I'm going to put a rope on you. Simply for the reason. Right, we've got a rope on him. Where you go, Pace? That wasn't you, Big Z, that was Pace, but anyway, you can be forgiven for that. Heal up, heal up, back here, heal up. Oh, Poe, you're all caught up in your blo Oh, Poe, hold on, Poe. Wait there, Poe. I'll fix you up. Hold on, mate. You're all hooked up. You're all caught up. Hold on. I wonder why you went coming out. Wait there, girl. Wait there. Stay there. What's going on here? You've got your blanket caught up in there. Stay there. Okay, we've got your bedding untangled. It's a big mess. There you go, Poe. Now you're good. You're good. There you go. Bigsy's on his fridge. Good boy, Bigsy. You stay there. Stay there. Put Poe's bedding back inside. Oh, it's all... She's torn a carpet out. All good. Oh, you're a good boy. You're still waiting for me, eh? You're a good boy, aren't you, eh? You're a good boy. Okay, let's go for a walk. Come on. Yes, I'll give you an apple when we get out the paddock. So there's the boat that I bought for 500 bucks. It's a beautiful hull. Needs a bit of work, but we'll be... Uh, into that mission as soon as the weather sorts the shit out. You got yourself an apple, have you, Poe? Good girl. Heal up, Big Z. Good dog. Heal up. Not for Pace. That's for Big Z. Big Z, eat up. Pace. Fetch your Pace. Good dog. Oh, Big Z's running down the paddock and a heron's taken off there. Just go above the duck pond here. Where is it? Oh, just down there. Flying around. Grey heron. Hmm. So what's going on with the flat bottom floozy, you may ask yourself. Well, me mate Arb started working on it. Well, he's made a, a, a very short start. What he's done is he's peeled off where water was coming in through some of the windows. And what he's found is that uh, there's been some, some water coming through. We know we knew that anyway, but he's found out where it's coming through. And basically he's getting made up a certain flashing. And I'm going to document all that for you guys that like following Arb because he's a bloody absolute top builder, absolute craftsman. And... He's really, really talented, and it'll give you some insight. Basically, what he's saying is that the windows on there aren't actually boat windows. They're house windows for something that's getting a lot of water. Come on. So uh, that's a bit of bit of work in progress. No one's living in there. Uh, currently, the ladies are in the caravan that they've hired for a while. But I am going to put the boat back in the water probably next summer if we get all the work done on it. But it's all about money and cost. Everything gets done when we can afford to pay for it. And it's bloody expensive building anything these days because builders' wages have gone up because fuel's gone up. Arb's got to drive all the way from his house in town, so that cost him. And he only charges me one way because he's a good bastard. And then there's all the, the cost of the gear. And, of course, there's his labour on top of that. So it's a lot of cost. Some of you might be saying, well, why don't you do it, Clay? Well, I would, but there's just not enough hours in a day. It's the sort of job that I could manage. 
But the other thing is that I would only do half as good as Arb, well not even that, because he's twice as good at, at doing those jobs as me, so it just doesn't make sense for me to do a half ass job when I should be doing other things like the garden, the livestock, the chickens. And the chickens are actually something that's worth investing in. And I said in the last video, I was looking for a big red cock to put over my, my trucks to get some chickens. I think it was Aaron text me and said I could probably, uh, there's an app called Grinder. I could probably find one, but uh, I had no luck, I just had a whole lot of naked men there, and so yeah, probably um, a uh, good good tip mate, but yeah, no, I didn't, uh, didn't actually, uh, it was not as helpful at all, I didn't find that uh, that uh, rooster I was looking for, cheeky bastard. Anyway, uh, we'll carry on and uh, see what the ducks are up to. Dogs on the roam for a mouse, the parry's hanging around to get a bit of grain if they can. It's an automatic feeder, but I don't have it so it's automatically on feed, otherwise the pooks will take everything. The pikukos love my feed. We do it like this. There's not much in there, is there? Okay, back to the side. There you go. We'll do it. Break there. That's a duck that I'd consider killing for eating. I've not decided if I'm going to hunt Poe this season or not, and the pigs. Pace will be the main this season, I think, although we'll see how Bigsy goes. But Poe's, uh, I think she's just about ready for retirement. She's in her 10th year. Bigsy's a much stronger dog than, than Poe, always has been, and certainly even stronger than Pace, even though uh, Pace is a lot older. He's got the muscle the size, he just doesn't have the hunting experience. What you doing, Bigsy? Hey, what you doing, Bigsy? Good boy, Bigsy, what you doing, eh? Bigsy, come. Good dog, he's got good ears, good boy. That's a good dog, Bigsy. He might have smelt a mouse down there. Bigsy, good dog. What you doing, mate, eh? What you doing, boy, hey? What you doing, eh? What you doing, eh? You're a good boy, aren't you? He might have smelt a mouse in there, a rat. He's got his nose down there, wouldn't surprise me. Good boy, that's your good dog. That's your good boy. He's a lovely dog. He's still intact, I didn't cut his nuts out, I've been thinking about it, but uh, we haven't any scraps. Pace McBride lost his nuts, didn't you Pace, eh? What a noise you did, man. You took me to the vat and when I came home, your nuts were gone, you bastard. Yeah, well, you've still got a sack to, to pretend they're there, but no, there's no nuts in there at all. For all of you people that have, like me, that have getting to the sort of other end of your lifetime, you're getting close to 60, I'm 59, and you've worked bloody hard, you've had a good time and you've managed to actually save enough to buy a bit of dirt then you'll understand the feeling you get for all your hard work and uh, you, the gratitude you feel when you walk around on a piece of dirt like this and other people will see this old man walking around a piece of dirt and goes oh there's an old man work, walking around on a piece of dirt but really I'm not just an old man walking around on a piece of dirt I'm a bloke that was once a really young man but dreamed of owning a piece of dirt that worked many, many years and uh, saved and also made sure that I provided for others along the way and raised children and looked after them. And and you get to the stage in your life where you've actually got your piece of dirt and the feeling is a feeling there are no words to describe. You've got a piece of dirt, which means the people that you love have a place to stay if they they have a, a hard period in their life where they need some, some ground to stand on, where it's a safe space. Or people come into your life that are struggling and they just need a safe space where they can put some roots down for a while and you can help them on their journey. Uh, the last person I had was Damo and he's he's carried on but I've had a lot more before that. So you've got the piece of dirt and nobody can tell you to fuck off. Nobody can say hey you're gonna get a leave. Nobody can tell you to. And God if anybody tries you're gonna you're gonna you, you'll die fighting for it won't you because it's something you've worked for your whole entire life. But you have a have a real a peaceful feeling that you can grow some vegetables, you can grow some fruit trees, you can build a shed if you want to, you can put your boat on it, even though the council comes and grizzle about it because you've got neighbours that grizzle too much. I'll tell you, some of my neighbours around here, their bum was on fire, and you're pissed on it to put it out there, but bloody grizzle. I don't think they understand the idea of being neighbourly. It's not very neighbourly to call up the council when you've got your own boat on your land. It's not going to be there forever, just while my mate works on it. Oh, the dogs look like they found a mouse over there. Tails a wagon. They're uh, getting better and better. They get high po. Po, well, she'll know straight away there's a mouse. You should go and check it out, and if there's not, she'll leave pretty quick. They look pretty high po, but Poe doesn't. She's already starting to go away, so I'd say it's a false alarm. 
she wouldn't be going away from that if there was a mouse here. Nah, she's like looking back, she's like, nah, you guys are dreaming. Yeah, Pace is like, no, nah, there wasn't anything here because Poe wasn't there. Hey, Poe, what you doing, Poe? Hey, Poe, Poe. Hey, Poe, what you doing, Poe? Was there nothing there, eh? Come here, Poe. Come see me. Poe, come. Come here. Come here. I'm going to check this cancer out. How's it doing? Yeah, it's getting bigger, but it hasn't taken it yet. She smells something down here. Tails all wagging. Happy dogs, happy dogs. Where's that mouse, Poe? Where's that mouse? She's got the best nose of all the dogs. She's the best pig dog, best ratter, best mouser. Got a nice shiny coat. The old posse arm's really doing it for her. Come up, heel up. Oh, suddenly Poe's onto something and Pace sees it. They're all over there. They were here, now they're back again over there. Oh, good dog, Pace. Good boy. You're a good doggy, aren't you? Fucking right, I am, man. I'm a fucking really good doggy. I'm Pace Big Bride. Where you go? Having a lot of fun on the farm. Uh, it's a dog's life here, I tell you. This year I've got more young guys that want to go hunting than I've got seats in the truck. I've got about nine. Truck can take comfortably, comfortably three. Because uh, you need room for space for bags and stuff. Really two young guys and another adult bloke. We'll kick into it soon, but just not enough trucks and not enough people. So um, just remember if you're a hunter this uh, season, to take some young fella out that doesn't have a dad and that opportunity. And take them out to teach them, not to use them. Not to use them as just your runner, do all your hard work, but actually so he learns the skills, all the skills. Not just how to stick a pig, do all the stuff. How to throat it, arsehole it, skin it, do all the cuts when you get it home, how to prepare the meat, and how to do all the stuff with it. It's really important that young guys learn that, particularly here in New Zealand. I don't think that hunting four-legged animals is going to be something that's going to last forever in this country. I think... The powers that be would like us to be pest free here in New Zealand. They say by 2050. Well, I don't think we'll ever be pest free. What do you reckon? I mean, you're never going to get rid of all the rats. But if you're going to get rid of all the pests, that means the cats too, you know. No one wants their pussy taken away, do they? Nobody. That ain't going to happen. So, we'll see. Watch the space. But I definitely see they're going to try to get deer numbers and pig numbers down in one way or another. <whistles> Come on. Good dogs. Good dogs. Good boy, Pace. Fix the cup. Fix the cup! Good dog Poe! Fix the cup! Fix the cup! He's got his nose down, he's found something that's not going to break him. Fix the cup! Good dog! Good boy! Oh, he is coming. He's coming, but I just didn't see it. Good boy! Come on, Bixie! Come on, Bixie! Come on! Heal up, Bixie! Heal up! Heal up, Bigsy. Bigsy, come. Good dog. Good boy. That's a good dog. Good boy. That's a good boy. Here we go. Where you go, Pace? Where you go, Pace? Just a bit of Bigsy time. When Damo was here, he was really good with the dogs. Bigsy was his favourite. You're a good boy, aren't you, eh? I mean, how could you not love this dog? Look at him. Isn't he a beautiful boy? He's just beautiful. Yeah, you're a beautiful girl too, Po. You're a good girl, Po. Yep, good dogs. All right, we'll take him and give him some feed. And uh, they haven't had a feed today. Normally they get one in the morning, one at night, but I didn't feed them this morning. I ran them quite hard. I'd like to get them a little bit fitter now. We're trying to get three runs in a day to get their fitness up for when we start hunting soon. He got it too. You robber. Robbing all me apples. And that was a good apple too, wasn't it? Hmm? Yeah, all right. My auntie Claire phoned me yesterday and she said, uh, I'm concerned about your dog eating the apples because the arsenic in the seeds. And she's right. There is plenty of arsenic in the seed of an apple. In fact, there's arsenic in lots of plants and foods we eat. Apricot kernels, oh, there's almonds, there's lots of, lots of plants high with arsenic. Some even have natural, uh, what we call 1080. A lot of plants have that. In fact, 1080 comes from plants. It's a plant-based uh, poison. Plants secrete it and have it to keep animals from eating them. That's why a lot of the uh, trees in Aussie uh, don't really get mowed right down uh, by their possums like they do here, because our trees don't have that in them. It's also an aquaplane, like uh, there's aqua plants that also have it on them. And it's a plant's way of protecting itself. But your dog will have to eat 
about 35 to 40 kilogram of apples to get sick enough from the apple seed. So whilst it's in there, it's not going to kill them. In fact, I would go so far to say is in our lives, a little bit of toxin is actually quite good. In your box, get up, I'm going to give you some feed. Got the old posse yum, best tucker on the planet for dogs. Hey Pace, you're going to have to look at Poe's coat to know that. Her coat, it shines. Yeah, you just got to have some patience here Pace. You do mate. You can have some patience. We'll do it over in Bigsy's place, yeah? You get in your box. Get up, mate. Stay there. Move back, mate. Where you go? Where you go? I need to use this as a chopping board. I like to spread Bigsy's around. Don't touch, Bigsy. Put some in his box there. Some down there. Some in difficult plates to get under there. Some down in here. Some up high. Some on the other side. Each corner. This dog here is the most untrained. Leave it. Very impatient dog. Sorry, Super Duck, you missed out that time. You too, Ducky. Eat up. Bigsy's on the prowl. Poe's taking her into the box. Oh, her box has got stuff in. Any box, Poe. Muscle on there, Poe. Get in your box, Poe. Get in. Good girl. Still going bloody fast, Bigsy. Yep. Stops him from choking on it. Always found inside his box. Oh, post, po, po, po. Good dog. I was worried that she had some fur in her mouth then. You okay, po? Good girl. Eat up, po. That's a good dog. Pace, you get back in your box. In your box. Just had your walk. Oh, fuck it. I want another walk, man. I'm an impatient little doggy. Yeah, you're a good dog. One piece fell out under the kennel and went in Bigsy's. Oh, Bigsy's got the one at the top. He's just found it now. And Poe's got the one underneath the kennel. There's one that dropped down there through the cracks. You'll find it. Who knows? We'll sniff it out. She'll get it. I think Bigsy's got his lot. Uh, she got it. Now she's looking for another one. I don't think she's going to find it, though. No, she's got something there. No. I'm tail wagging all the time. Happy dog. Aren't you happy dog, eh? Aren't you happy dog, eh? You get back in your box, Poe. In your box. Get up. Up. In your box. Get up. Good girl. Oh, I've been talking short for about 40 minutes. Uh, nothing really flash about a snap vlog. It's just me yakking on the farm, sharing a little bit of my day with you. I hope it's been of some value to you or made you laugh or made you do something. Uh, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to just post this now. It's Friday. Patrons will get it first. And uh, then I'll post it public a bit later on. Have a great weekend. And uh, thanks for following me. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subby button, helps old Clay out. Still going after all these years, actually doing quite well right now on the channel. My latest uh, primitive videos, it's going really good. Like the last one we know got 1.4 million views and this one is actually, it's even going to be bigger. I think it's already had 250 views, quarter of a million. It's only been up for two weeks almost. So not even two weeks. So it's going to do even better, I think. We'll see how we go. I uh, kind of knew it would. Because I put so much work into it, I thought, this one doesn't go, I'm going to quit. <laughs> I just, yeah, it was so much work, that video. And really, the whole the whole mission was really difficult. So, uh, I think I'll probably do more of those, because I really enjoy doing them. Well, oh, sorry, I'm spinning around, I'll make you get as sick as a dog. Yeah, I'll just uh, do another one soon, I think, because they're fun. I've had to put off a few uh, of things I was going to do, like Stuart Island, due to a bit of health. I'm actually good, but I've got something that pops up occasionally, a bit of AF, so I've got to get on top of that before I go and do hard out missions. But the ones close to home, along the beach here, they're real fun to do. And if anything does go wrong, I'm not too far from home to go home again. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Be good, can't be good, be careful. And I'll see you in the next video. What I'll do is, um, I'll normally have music in my videos. I'll see if I can find a harmonica and finish off with a song for you. Righto, this is a uh, guitar song, but I'm going to play the harmonica. By the way, this is not a Lee Oscar, this is a M Suzuki, and it's in the key of D. Well, the hunting life is a mighty fine life, up on a hill with your dog and knife. A hunting life is a mighty fine life, mighty fine life for me, oh, a mighty fine life for me, oh. All right. Well, 
fishing life is a mighty fine life Away from trouble and away from strife A fishing life is a mighty fine life Mighty fine life for me, oh Mighty fine life for me, oh Well, I don't need things that shine like gold Just good memories for when I'm old Well, a ride in life is a mighty fine life High in the saddle and high on life A ride in life is a mighty fine life Mighty fine life for me, oh Well, trucking life is a mighty fine life I'm trucking home to my trucking good wife A trucking life is a mighty fine life Mighty fine life for me, oh Mighty fine life for me, oh Well, I don't need things that shine like gold Just good memories when I'm old There we go. Okay, I hope you enjoy that song. Have a good one. See you soon.